Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we continue studying decimals, this time with thousands or three decimal digits. Now, to illustrate thousands is not as easy as to illustrate tens or hundreds. I drew here, this is one whole, it's divided already into hundred parts. So each one of these little squares would be a hundredth. But to illustrate thousands, I have to divide one of these into ten new parts. And so this is divided into ten new parts, and one of the parts is colored, and so that is one thousandth. As a decimal we write 0 0.001. That's because in a decimal we have, after the decimal point, we have tenths place, hundredths place, and then comes thousandths place. Here's another number that has some thousandth parts. It has zero ones. And this is the tenths place, so we have two tenths, four hundredths, and six thousandths. And I'm going to illustrate and color it in here. First I have two tenths, which a tenth would be, all of this would be one tenth. And another tenth here. So all of this gets colored. At the same time, it is twenty hundredths, and it is also at the same time two hundred thousandths. Then I have four hundredths, so I color four of these squares. That would be the four hundredths. And then last with six thousandths, so I would color some more from here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is now two tenths, four hundredths, and six thousandths. But altogether it is at the same time, it is two hundred and forty-six thousandths. So as a fraction, I'm going to write two hundred and forty-six over thousand. Now, also on a number line, it becomes more difficult now to illustrate thousands. My number line goes from zero to one, and it's already divided into ten parts, or tenths. And then the next step would be to divide it into hundreds. So I take one of these and divide it into ten new parts. These here, these increments here would, would illustrate hundreds. But then, I cannot possibly do so, but I will take this little interval here and divide that into 10 new parts. And then the first line there will show me 1000. It will be just over there somewhere and I can't, I can't draw it. If you are asked to point to this number on a number line, you can think that, okay, it is 0 0.348, it is, there's 3 tenths there, so it is a little bit past. 3 tenths. Then it has 4 hundredths, so we would divide this into 10 parts. And go to the fourth line. Over here, this one. That would illustrate the fourth hundredth here after 3 tenths. And then, from here to here, I would need to divide it into 10 new parts, which I can't. And then take the eighth line, so it is somewhere there in between. Or here, I have 0 0.809, it is 809 thousandths, but it is also 8 tenths and then 9 thousandths. So it's a little bit past 8 tenths. Uh, I will divide it into 10 parts to see the hundredths, and there's no hundredths, so it is between the 0 0.8 line and the first hundredth here. It's between there. Lastly, let us study a little bit, changing fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. These ones here all have a denominator of thousand. So they all will have thousand parts and they will have to have three decimal digits. Because in a decimal number, the first digit would be tenths, then hundredths, then thousands. And uh, just like here, as a shortcut, we can read this as 246 and then just thousands. We can think of this as 77 thousands. We just write the 77 here and make sure we have three decimals. So I write 77 and I have to have three decimal digits, so that's why I have to put zero here and point here. And there it is. Similarly here, I have thousand as a denominator. I will need three decimal digits here, then my decimal point. So the 6 goes way over here, 
and zeros everywhere else. 0 0.006 is 6,000. And here, I just write down that number, 4,098. And make sure I have three decimals from here, one, two, three, so the point goes here. Another way to think about this is, of course, that 4,098. The 4,000 thousands makes four as a whole number, and then the 98 thousands go here. Now to change these to fractions or mixed numbers, here, I can read these three decimals as this as a single number of 107, and then they are thousands. And um, technically, though, this would be one tenth, and this would be seven thousandths. But the one tenth is at the same time hundred thousandths. So that's why this becomes hundred thousandths and seven thousandths together, one hundred and seven thousandths. Now this here does not have three decimal digits, so therefore it's not going to be thousands, it's going to be tens, no, I'm sorry, hundreds. Okay, here's tens, here's hundreds, but together we can read it as 17, and then the denominator is 100, because of these two decimal digits. And here's 3.008, since we have three decimal digits, as a fraction it's going to have thousands. We just write this whole number, imagining there's no decimal point. 3008. That's how it is as a fraction. We can also write it as a mixed number. 3 here becomes 3. And then 8 here is 8,000. Now this one here, I put in here because children need practice of course, where we have different length decimals. This one only has one decimal digit after the decimal point, so this is tenths. As a mixed number, we have three here, and then eight tenths. And as a fraction, you just imagine there's no decimal point and write the 38 and 10 in the denominator. Lastly, this long number, it may look difficult, but to make it into a single fraction, all you do is just hide the decimal point and write the whole 31,982 and then figure out your denominator, which because there's three decimal digits, we again have 1,000 here. As a mixed number, you can take this as your whole number part. And then these three become the thousands.